Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyra, and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my three-step play-by-play of how to get a level three on the ATI exams. I know that the ATI exam can be daunting, but with proper preparation and studying, it is possible to get level three with ease. So to begin, step one is going to be to utilize dynamic quizzing. So if you are taking an ATI exam, I assume that your program has had you use the ATI platform throughout your nursing program. And if you are taking the ATI exam, the main resource you need to use is the ATI website. Do not go digging into a bunch of other resources to take this exam because if you are utilizing a bunch of other outside resources for practice questions, you're gonna get a little bit confused. You might learn some information, but it's best just to stick to ATI because they are the ones writing your exams and the way they word things are gonna be very similar and the way things look are going to be similar. So when you are taking the dynamic quizzing, you can tailor it to whatever subject you are testing for. If you were just working on an ATI for a specific class, just do the dynamic quizzing questions for that subject, such as mental health, or maternal newborn and pediatrics, just do those questions. If you are studying for the comprehensive ATI at the end of your program, then I suggest you to just always do quizzing with all of the topics because this is gonna allow you to be able to pick from different topics because those questions are gonna come up any way, shape, or form. They're not gonna be 10 questions of mental health then 10 questions of med surge, and then 10 questions of OB. It's gonna be completely random, so you need to get used to answering them in a random fashion. Some tips for answering some of these questions is to read the question slowly, but also don't read into the question too much. Whatever the question is asking you, just answer it literally. Don't add an in extra information that you think it could be meaning or talking about. Use what it says right in front of you and answer that question. Also, try to narrow your answer choices down to two. If you can get it down to two, this is gonna make it way easier for you to figure out which is the correct answer. And once you get it down to two, you need to put on that nursing cap and pick the best answer. Also with these ATI questions and even into the NCLEX, you need to make sure that you utilize your airway breathing circulation priority. If it talks about the airway respiratory depression of some sort, you need to choose that answer. It is almost always respiratory something if, if it's a priority type question. So make sure you're using that level of prioritization, airway, breathing, circulation, your ABCs, and then also make sure you understand the difference between expected findings and unexpected findings. If someone just had surgery and they have a drain and there is pink or a little bit of color in the drainage, that's expected. They just had surgery. They're going to have some drainage. But is bright red blood expected? No, that's not normal. So you need to know the differences of what to expect and what not to expect. Another strategy that is very important to utilize with answering these questions is your ADPI, so your nursing process. Assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, evaluation. You need to do these things in order. If you see a patient and something looks off, you need to always assess first. Make sure you're assessing the problem to see what you even need to do. You're not gonna be able to do anything effectively without assessing what is even going on in the first place. So utilize your prioritization strategies, your nursing process to answer these questions. So now that step one, we have done our dynamic quizzing. Now we are gonna to go to step two and we are going to review all of the questions. This is the most important step in my opinion, reading the rationales and understanding why you got questions wrong and understanding why you got questions right is so very important. If you read all the rationales, you're gonna get into the mind of the ATI writers and see why they thought this was right and why they thought that was wrong. So it's very important to read all of the rationales and I mean all. If you get an answer correct, you might have used a test taking strategy, which is helpful, which we teach you to do, but it's also important to read the rationale so maybe you can understand 
why it was right and not just why you got it right because you guessed it. So maybe next time when that question pops up, you'll be able to understand it conceptually why that answer is correct and choose the correct answer the next time. Also, when you're reading these rationales, it's really important to understand why the other answer choices were wrong because those wrong answer choices could be a right answer choice in the next scenario or the next question. So I urge you to read all of the rationales. Whenever you get to a question that you feel like you've read the rationale but you're still not really understanding it, I would write that topic down. If you're consistently getting heart failure questions wrong, write down heart failure on your notes app or a notepad so you know that I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna study this more in depth. That leads me into step number three is the study portion. So after you've read all your rationales, you have a list of topics that you need to go over, such as heart failure, preeclampsia, bipolar disorder, things like that. Now you're gonna go study those topics more in depth. And you wanna utilize, again, the ATI study books if possible to study these topics. When you go back to this book to study, do not read the whole book front to back. Read the topics and the subjects that you are not understanding. You want to know the ins and outs of these topics. You want to know what is heart failure? What causes heart failure? What are the risk factors for heart failure? How am I going to diagnose heart failure? What labs are going to be high? What is the treatments for heart failure? And why are those the treatments for heart failure? What am I going to do as a nurse to help this patient in the hospital if they have heart failure? So you really need to understand the ins and outs of these conditions. If you can answer basically all those questions, you are Gucci. So those are the three steps to getting a level three on the ATI. If you do these three steps and you repeat it, and you repeat it, and you repeat it, you're gonna notice that the amount of questions you get right is going to increase, 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 increase. Because every time you read those rationales and study those topics, the weak topics that you are struggling with, you're going to increase your knowledge and then your scores are gonna go up. So do step one, do step two, do step three, and then go back, do another quiz. Step one, step two, step three, Go back and do another quiz. To end off this video, I will say there is one more resource that I suggest you to use if you are tired of reading the book. Level Up RN on YouTube. She is the GOAT. She has so many videos on these topics that are on the ATI. The videos are short, concise, and sweet to the point, which I really love. Some of the videos are like three to five minutes on one little topic, and then you can move to the next. So if you need to study mental health, she has a playlist for mental health. If you need to study med surge, she has a playlist for med surge. If you need a playlist for insert subject, she probably has a playlist. So this is really helpful for if you are just tired of reading those ATI books, black and white, no color, no pictures, then go to Level Up RN and she does practice questions at the end of her videos as well. And it feels like her information is kind of tailored to the ATI as well. So the only resources I use for studying for these ATIs, ATI platform, Level Up RN, that's it. So without further ado, that is the end of this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope all of you guys get level threes. The biggest thing I feel like that people need to understand with being successful in nursing school and these exams, really all exams, this process works, you need to hit your weak points. You need to have the ability to identify your weak points and go ham on those weak points. You don't need to keep studying the things you're good at. You already know you're good at it. Find out your weak points, study them so that the next time that question comes up, you get it right. That's the end of this video, y'all. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.